just had an interesting to and fro in the comments section of one of Hyde Loday's videos. Uh, it got me thinking um, about levels of existence. Um, normal everyday existence, I would presume we'd define as um, how we interact with the world. We being our own identities, our own um, our own bodies, I guess, and our relationship to our own bodies and their relationship to the outside world. In other words, my, the, the, the form of me-ness, my body, that I sort of um, present to the world, and it identifies as me, uh, and how it interacts with phenomenality, with everything else you see out there. Um, in other words, I am standing in this room. See this vast room in here. I'm standing in here. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm interacting with the world, with you know the phenomenal universe or whatever you want to call it. There's another level of existence, though, which you know, when you get into things like yoga or whatever that you start to become aware of, um, how you interact, say, with your own existence itself, or how, I don't know, something that is kind of you but isn't interacts with the body itself. Um, as I say, if, if I want to do something, um, if I want to, say, shuffle around on my feet like I just did, then I know what happens. My brain sends messages down to my feet and my balance kicks in to make sure that when I move I don't fall over or whatever. Um, we can sort of say that you didn't really make that decision to do that, but that's really not what I'm referring to. What I'm talking about is the experience of existing in that kind of reality as opposed to the reality of this. Um, what does it mean to exist inside of this, um, this thing, this body? What does it mean to... Um, see this taking place, to see the the interactions that you have with yourself, the interactions that you have with your body. Um, even if you don't want to talk about a you, something is perceiving this. Um, what does that mean? What does it mean to exist inside of your body? Um, I was discussing existential panic and how, you know, that old thing about, uh, that I, I like to quote from, um, sometimes they come back by Stephen King. He talks about a puppet, um, the expression on its face, what it would look like if the puppet came alive, only to discover it was still on strings. Um, strings being manipulated by something else, of course. <laughs> um, now that's uh, that's an interesting metaphor. Um, now, that, again, I would say that that implies that there is something else out there that's doing the manipulating. It certainly doesn't feel like it any more than like if someone's going to dispute that I'm actually consciously manipulating my own body. Um, okay, then we better be prepared to dispute the fact that something else is consciously <laughs> manipulating my body. Uh, that seems a bit far-fetched, too. In fact, more far-fetched than the idea that I'm doing it. Um, what would you call that kind of intimacy? That kind of intimacy with your own existence? Um, I guess Camus would have said, or sorry, Sartre would have said that it's that's that's the cause of nausea, the sort of fatigue that we get from existence. What makes us think that nausea is the only possible um, reaction to that? How about fascination and wonderment? Or, as Valcantin uh, implied, how about horror, existential horror, existential panic? Um, why is it that when I contemplate the fact that I'm encased or something that believes itself to be me is encased in this fleshy sheath I'm fascinated, and I'm sort of in awe of it. I, I don't know. It's it sounds corny, but it's almost like I feel there's there's a love there. Um, why do I feel that? And other people sort of go, "This is horrible." I'm a puppet on strings, being manipulated by something else, and I'm aware that this is happening. What makes the difference? What what is it that? that transforms or that sort of separates the experience 
of experience, the experience of existence, from being something negative to something positive, or back again, positive to negative. What does that? I, as usual, I don't really have any answers, but um, I'm not. I think that it's a valid question. I think that it's a. It may even be a central question. Um, what input do we have, or what? I think I think it's it seems axiomatic that we want to um, want to avoid existential horror, or existential panic, or anxiety, or whatever, and seek out and become uh, I don't know uh, that which is love, that which is uh, contentment, uh, clear headedness, um, joy, that sort of thing. Um, what brings one person? positive sense may bring someone else a horrible sense and what would that be um, I, I don't think that that's actually a, a, an easily answered question any more than it's easy to answer the question what is suffering um, because as I said when we when we're in sort of the moment of existence when they're in the moment of becoming um, we can't really say that we're in the in the positive or in the negative or whatever in any concrete sense because everything is constantly changing and in flux um, and yet we still have desires for one thing and we and desires to avoid another thing um, what is it that makes even that preference possible 